What's up YouTube? Today we are looking at a new plugin that's just come out. It's called Backbone by Steinberg, the creators of Cubase. So it's a very interesting take on a sampler. It's sort of not your average kind of multi-sample sampler for instruments and that kind of stuff. It's more developed for layering, you know, more percussive stuff like that. But it's got some pretty interesting stuff in here for sound design and creating synths and sound effects and that kind of stuff. So I kind of want to outline everything in this video from creating kick drums to actual percussions and also some more experimental type of stuff that you can do with it. Uh, I want to show you guys the capabilities of this, why it's such a cool tool for workflow specifically within Cubase. I'm sure a lot of these features are available outside of the Cubase sphere. I believe it will be available as a VST. So for all those users of Ableton and other DAWs, I'm sure this will be interesting for you guys as well. So just before we get into the video, Steinberg did actually send me this plugin for the purpose of this video. Um, I currently have it in a beta or a pre-release version, so it doesn't have any content built in like layers and samples and that kind of stuff. But that being said is you can do quite a lot with just, you know, the samples that you already have, dragging and dropping in there. Uh, you know, you can resynthesize stuff, but I don't want to give away too much. Let's dive in and have a look. Okay, so like I said, the plugin is called Backbone and it's a sampler and it's kind of more designed around your sort of layering style of sampling as opposed to uh, multi samples or something like the drum rack or the groove agent. This one's particularly special because you can kind of really fine tune samples that you already have. It's different from something like Sonic Academy Kick 2 or Native Instruments TRK because it's not designed for synthesizing drums from scratch. That being said is you can do a lot of synthesis type of stuff with it by loading in very basic uh, sound waves and that kind of stuff, which we're going to get into. But, you know, just to show you guys some of the capabilities of, um, of this guy, what I want to do is, you know, let's just start off with something like a, a, a kick drum. And we can look at fine tuning um fine-tuning a kick drum to fit specifically you know maybe we want a little bit more envelope control than what our synth had so i've got a kick drum that i've made here but um i don't like the envelope of the kick too much so we can look at maybe editing that to fit into the track a little bit better so we can actually just drag any sample into the track like uh into the uh, plugin like this and just for reference we can do multiple samples as well and as you can see um it shows you you know the layers like that but um let me actually just remove this one because i don't want um, i just want to look at uh editing and fine-tuning a kick drum that we have for now so we can actually change the little view finder that we've got here to get a bit more of an accurate representation of what's going on there here uh what i've got is i've actually got it loaded up here um we can go ahead and start uh fine-tune it i want to show you some of the cool things about this uh 
about the envelopes in this plugin as opposed to like the sampler and some of the other more traditional samplers and stuff like that. So that's the standard uh, sample that we've got that I've, uh, I think I created, I think I created that within uh, Native Instruments TRK1. So let's jump into the amp section over here. As you can see, you've got kind of like a, um, like a macros control section, which is, has like all the kind of like um, course controls for each of the sections within the layer. Um, I'm going to dive into each of these for now, but just to start things off, I want to show you how cool this is for just fine tuning stuff like kick drums. Um, so let's jump in here. Uh, we can adjust the zoom to fit best. But here, what we can do, um, as you can see here, the timing at the bottom, I believe that's in milliseconds or seconds, actually. Um, we can go sync. And you'll see here what it's done is it's created, it's given us the exact 1 over 16 timing. So we can create our envelopes relevant to these sort of timings. You can actually change it here, switch it to triplets if you need as well. If you, if you kind of want to end the note on the 16th, but want to tweak this without moving that last one, you can snap this and then click on fixed over here. And it gives you the ability to kind of fine tune it like this. So now we've created a way of, you know, never having any overlap after that one over 16 note. So that's pretty cool. You call, you're also not limited, you know, you could do, for example, um, like a curve where, you know, you're just aware of the 1 over 16, but you're not exactly snapping it. You've still got a little bit of roll off because of the side chain effect that you've kind of programmed. So you kind of got creativity here, but the fact that you can sync it to the 1 over 16 and be conscious exactly where it is, um, you don't have to work out exactly how many milliseconds it is compared to your BPM and that kind of thing. So very, very quick workflow for these kind of, for these kind of like kick envelope controls and stuff. Um, let's look at maybe adding some nodes here so that, um, you know, it's on fixed here. So it's, this is not going to move um, what we've done here with the tail. Uh, let's look at maybe creating a bit of a, a, a scoop here out of the mid range of the kick. So like I mentioned, we've also got a uh, filter and a pitch control over here. So I'm not going to dive too in-depth with these for this kind of like more fine-tuning stuff. Um, I find it alters the sound a little bit too much. I mean, you could put a filter, for example, and then a bit of like envelopes and things if you wanted to. Um, but I find for this kind of thing, I'm kind of more looking for a cleaner sound. So I'm not looking to filter and that kind of thing. A uh, very interesting thing that this has is the resynth engine that's built in. Although I'm not going to use it for the kick. Let's basically... Um, what I want to show you, something that's actually also very, very cool, is, you know, we dragged the sample in, we've edited the amplitude envelope and that kind of thing, but now we want to export it and start playing around with other samples. What we can do is we can actually just drag it from here, boom, and it imports it into our project as a new sample. So now what we can do is we can load this guy into the sampler track that I've made here. So let's actually just move these away and maybe mute them as well. So I've got my sampler track here. Let me just move this out the way. Now we can drag our new sample in there. We might have to just adjust the snap timing. Uh, it is something about this plugin for some reason that has a bit of delay. If you're conscious of these kinds of things, it's not hard to fix. Cool, we've got our nice new kick drum that we've edited. Um, let's look at some uh, sort of creative stuff for hi-hats. So again, you know, keeping things simple, I'm not gonna go too far into the, like the layering and that kind of thing. Uh, what I want to do is let's just delete layer and let's drop in a hi-hat sample here. So let's check out this uh, resynth system.
I believe it's trying to recreate the sound um, of the sample using uh, sine wave partials. Um, there's two, two modes, actually a noise mode and a sine mode. Here you've got a lot of control into changing the, like the speeds and the formants and stuff and that kind of thing. You know, you're like resynthesizing the sound using partials, but then you've got a lot of control as to how it synthesizes these sounds. We, you know, we could kind of modulate this, modulate uh, some of these controls. So what I want to do is let's actually just put in a bunch of 16th notes here. So I'm going to put on the key follow and some of these velocity controls, and then we're just going to change the pitch and velocity of some of those hits. I can actually remove that now. So what I've done here is I've jumped over to the amplitude section and I've applied some key follow to the panning as well, just to give it a bit of variation there. So we've also got effects built in here. So how you access those is along the top here, you click on effects and you've basically got two chains of effects, effects one and effects two. And each of the layers can send to one or, or the other. Um, but then you've also got varying different types of routings for these. So serial which is one into the other various types of those and then parallel which is two different types of effects so for now let's just put on a bit of uh, echo or delay and reverb From pretty basic samples, you can get tons of varying sounds out of it. Um, I'm actually going to quickly render this one out. And then we can look at layering, creating sounds from scratch using uh, basic wave shapes and all sorts of stuff like that. So we've created this little percussion loop. Let's pop this in here. Okay, let's look at doing those sort of Tristan style psychedelic bongo type things. So I've got a couple of bongo samples here. If you guys are wondering, I think most of the samples that I used, except for the kick sample that I made, most of these like traditional drum samples are from the Thomas Penton pack. Um, I'm sure you, you can search that and find it anywhere. In this pitch section, you've got the ability to create a random, and that pitches it randomly each time you hit the note. We could also give it some envelope if we wanted. Uh, let's see if we can resynth this as well as uh, randomize the pitch of it. So that's pretty crazy. Um, let's put in some notes here.
So it's nice, but I think the random doesn't quite go high enough. So let's create a auto LFO using a MIDI insert. Um, so I'm going to go through this a bit more in depth in a future Cubase tutorial. Don't worry about that. But I'm sure you can work it out in various other DAWs, whichever ones you're using. So let's just put on a random. And uh, I guess controller 10 is fine. It's going to just learn CC. A few cool variations there. I want to render each of those. Let's look at the more traditional kind of layering capabilities. So I want to recreate a snare here for this guy. So let's remove that. I want to copy this MIDI so it's the same progression here that we had. And what I want to do is I want to look at using a couple of my existing, uh, let's save this. I want to look at using, you know, existing samples, uh, maybe snares and you know, other stuff to kind of create a layered sound. So let's put in a couple of, we can actually just drag them straight here. Uh, tablers. Uh, I want to look for some more kind of snare clap oriented type of stuff. So this is obviously taking into the extreme. I mean, I probably wouldn't put this many layers in usually, but I just want to show you guys the kind of crazy capabilities of this plugin. Obviously, if we just play it now, it's going to be a bit crazy because it's going to be all of these layers together. So what I want to do is I want to start muting them and just introducing them bit by bit. And we can start working on them as, as we kind of go through it. So let's check this out. So we've got one layer here, which has like a nice kind of like high frequency and tail reverby type of thing. But that beginning snap is a little bit too much. So let's look at taking that away and we can replace it with some of the other layers that we've got here.
So we can like put in the conga and then use this resynth method and then change the formant a little bit to kind of give it a bit more of that kind of tinniness. Um, we can filter it a little bit. Let's put on some, maybe some band pass filter. And then let's find, you know, we don't want it to ring out the, with that like tinniness the whole time. We just want a little bit of the tinniness in the actual hit itself, I think. That's pretty cool. I like that. So now what we can do is we can just go drag sample and it creates us a sample of that entire layered thing that we've just made. So now what we can do is we can just drag this now back into a sampler. So let's pop this here. Um, I actually just want to make it a bit shorter and bounce it just so we're not using unnecessary memory and then drag it in here. So here I have a sine wave. Um, let me just initialize this real quick. Okay, so back to what I was saying. I've got a sine wave here, which I believe I made using Serum. Uh, just exported it, uh, playing a regular sine wave from Basic Shapes. And then cut out exactly one cycle of the waveform. So let's drop this in here as a sample. So it's not very exciting for the time being because it's just one little kind of one little impulse. Um, we can jump into the sample section and set it to loop over here. We can drop a sine wave in there, set it to loop, and then alter the envelopes over here to create our own kick drums from scratch. So let me just um, snap this to one over 16. So it's not too long, something like that for now. And then let's jump to the pitch over here. So we've got this pitch envelope, right? And we can also sync this to the 16th. You see exactly what's going on here. And then envelope amount is over here. And that's to create us a nice little chunky Cytrons kick drum. So let's just look at the scope real quick. Um, I wanna put in the kicks progression here. So we can tighten this pitch envelope depending, you know, on the exact 16th. So we can say, okay, we want it half of that uh, kick. We want to, we want it to be at its, at its sort of most stable pitch. Here you do have a quick decay control, but I often end up just leaving that and then fine tuning it here rather. Let me undo and let's say fixed. Okay, let's jump to the volume automation again. So I want to give it a scoop in the mid range.
So keep in mind, this is in C. Um, so we can pitch this to the key of the track um, or whatever key we want and alter the fundamental. So another interesting thing is using the filters to kind of EQ different parts of the sample, let's say. Because you've got this envelope control, you turn on this guide parameter and then sync. So we can see here where our kick's boominess is. But I kind of want to start filtering it off before that. Um, so it's not as like loud in that part, if that makes sense. So let's create an envelope like this on a low pass filter. Awesome, that pretty much wraps it up. Um, this is probably gonna be a bit long. It's supposed to be a sort of first look video, but there's so many features in this thing that I figured I kind of wanted to touch a lot of uh, the capabilities and stuff like that. So I'm obviously gonna do some more follow-up videos on more kind of in-depth sounds, more specific to certain stuff. So definitely stay tuned for that. And like I said, this is the kind of pre-release version. So there's a lot of uh, the built-in content that I actually don't have in this version. So as that kind of gets released and as I get hold of uh, that um, at the release date of the plugin, then I'll start to do more in-depth videos what, with uh, what it actually comes with so that you can get close to the sounds because obviously this is stuff that, um, you know, these samples and stuff you may not have. A big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.